Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Rundeck and Sensu and how we've built some integration between the two. And, uh, you know, today, complex IT environments are, are driving a really an increased need to streamline operations and increase automation capabilities. So Rundeck is excited to partner with Sensu and add automated runbooks to their monitoring as code approach. We've jointly developed a, a number of Rundeck plugins and a Sensu handler to streamline integrating these two solutions. But since invitations came from both companies, let's give a quick overview of, of what both products do in case, in case people aren't familiar. Uh, I'll introduce Todd Campbell and he can talk a little bit about Sensu. Thank you, Forrest. Sensu is the observability pipeline that delivers monitoring as code for any cloud. It provides a flexible automation platform for DevOps and SRE teams that allow them to reuse their existing monitoring and observability tools and integrate with best of breed data platforms. With Sensu, you get complete visibility from bare metal to Kubernetes. And if you'd like to know more about what monitoring as code means, Sensu will be hosting a webinar about it next month. And you can find more information about that on our website. Right, and then uh, Rundeck is, is Runbook Automation that gives anyone in your organization self-service access to operations tasks that previously might only have been managed by subject matter experts. All right, the word automation sometimes can instill a little bit of anxiety when balancing that against complicated infrastructures uh, that we mentioned at the start. So before we get into the demonstration, I want to talk a little bit about the automation evolution. And, you know, typically our advice to customers climbing the, this figurative mountain of automation is to employ a, a crawl, walk, run approach. We encourage starting off with low risk activities like gathering performance metrics and other key performance indicators when an incident starts to enhance situational awareness. Secondary steps could be low impact common remediation actions like clearing temp and cache files. And as you, you know, continue to climb the mountain, you, you start checking off those try this first every time types of activities and working up to things like restarts or adding resources or, or automating more complicated and or riskier activities. You know, as with any risk-based activity, each business unit will have to determine the risk versus reward when it comes to automating a fix. But as we'll show in the demo, there's, you know, we have a simple example scenario that represents something in this, uh, this second from the top tier. And uh, we'll just jump into the demo and, and kind of give you a preview of what we're going to do. So we have a run deck environment running here. We also have our Sensu environment running here. It's all uh, running, you know, within Docker. And there, there's also a few nodes. There's about three nodes running Nginx. Now Sensu is monitoring those nodes and letting us know that everything currently is healthy. The, the, age, the Sensu agents are responding and we, we have an Nginx check configured to make sure that Nginx is also healthy. We can see those same corresponding nodes in Rundeck also reporting as healthy and, and we're ready to execute, we're able to execute commands against them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break one of those instances. We're gonna stop the Nginx service. And what we'll see Sensu do is it will report that that, uh, that agent is having some issues. It will fire a webhook through to Rundeck that will automate automatically restart the Nginx service and the, the node will become healthy again. So we'll come over here to our command line. We'll stop our Nginx service on the F6 node. And we will refresh. Now the Nginx check is on a 30 second pull cycle. So within 30 seconds, we'll see one of these nodes turn red. And we can see it already has uh, caught that, that Nginx is having an issue. And, and that is from the Nginx check. Uh, maybe Todd, if, if you wanna talk a little bit about this Nginx check and how it's configured, we can understand more about how it's gonna call Rundeck. Certainly, so as you can see, as you mentioned earlier, it's on a schedule of every 30 seconds, it's running a HTTP check command against the local host URL. So it's actually running on the agent to say, hey, is Nginx listening on port 80? The, the big things to look at here is the handler is actually defined as Rundeck. And then there's an annotation here for the Rundeck handler that says, if on the third occurrence of a severity one or two, which is a warning or critical, then run this webhook on the on run deck. So run that job. 
And so now, if and we that webhook that webhook uh, string corresponds to our webhook in Rundeck. So we have our Sensu webhook configured here, and that's this same string that we saw in the in the Rundeck handler, and that's going to end up calling our break fix Sensu, you know, Sensu fix job for this demo. And you know, we'll come back and and see if it's uh, if it's it's still down. So uh, just to speed up the uh, the yeah. cycle, as we mentioned, the, the three cycle, we'll just kind of execute this a couple more times. And that should trigger the firing of that, that webhook out to Rundeck. We can take a look at our activity tab and see that, you know, just at 10.09, maybe a few seconds ago even, we can see that the Sensu fix job was run. It was successfully executed against that F6 node that we have. And if we come back to... Sensu, we can see that the agent is now healthy again and that the Nginx service is started. There's more to uh, th that we've built into Rundeck. We have um, quite a few different job steps uh, that you can use to, to automate things with, within Sensu. Uh, you can create new checks. You can get information about a particular check on a node, run a particular check. So uh, like I executed that, that Nginx check, you can, you can force the checks to run. We, we can send events. And, and Todd, what are some scenarios that you might want to send events to Sensu? Yeah, so as, as part of a run deck job, you may want to emit events into your Sensu backend saying, a job is completed or a job has failed, or maybe maybe even collecting metrics as part of the job run, and you can actually emit those metrics as a as a Sensu event, and that way it can be picked up in your monitoring pipeline and sent to your, your data store for metrics. Right. And then we also have these jobs down here where we can create silences, and these are really helpful for planned maintenance. So the other job demonstration that, that we have is another Nginx restart but this particular restart is a planned restart. And, and what we're going to do is before we start, we, we stop the Nginx service, we're going to create a silence on that particular node so that Sensu doesn't send out additional alerts. We know that Nginx is going to go down. We don't need Sensu to, to doesn't, definitely don't need it, want it to restart through Rundeck, but we also don't need to notify or, or, or trigger any other handlers. So looking at this particular job, if we look at the definition, it's going to create the Nginx uh, silence. We're going to, it will stop the service for us. Then it's going to sleep for 45 seconds so we can show you what happened on the Sensu side, and then it will restart it and, and remove that silence after that, that period of time. So we'll go ahead and run this job. We're going to run it just on a different node, just a single one instead of all three. And it looks like it's already hit the stage where the sleep command is running. So we'll take a look in Sensu. And on our silences, we have an, a silence configured you know, for that particular node. In a second, we'll see that it knows now that Nginx is down. But we're not getting any you know, additional handlers coming out. Uh, once, uh, once that 45 seconds you know, comes past, uh, it will start the service and remove that silence. In the meantime, uh, I'm not. I can pull up our Q and A and see if there are any questions that are popping up. If you do have any questions uh, in the Zoom bar down there, there should be a, a Q and A button. Feel free to to post some questions if you have questions about uh, how this was configured, uh, any of the other specifics inside um, Sensu or Rundeck that you might be curious about. And should be able to see the silence cleared now, and the Nginx back up. Yep. And it looks like we might need to wait for that 30 second check on the, and yeah. then the Nginx is back online. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier when we were in the first demo was should like your automate, your, your automated remediation fail for some possible reason, you're going to have multiple avenues of surfacing that failure. Obviously within Rundeck, you have notifiers for when you have a separate notifier for when a, a Rundeck job fails. Or also on Sensu, if it continues to see that failure, you could have a handlers that are also configured after the fact to like maybe if they automated remediation through Rundeck fails, then service the alert through 
pager duty. So then someone can actually then manually intervene and continue to try to get the surface back online. Looks like we have a question from, from Kevin. And Kevin asked, can the silence execute other commands? So it's not the, so much, I think, the silence that's executing the commands, but it's Rundeck that, that could execute some of the commands. So we're just creating the silence in Sensu so that it doesn't trigger additional handlers or you know other messages uh, going out. You could, instead of stopping the Nginx service, if we take a look at, we can take a look at the definition of this job. We'll go into the workflow tab here. So we have our first, you know, step, our sensu step that creates a silence. And the next step is just a simple command step that's doing the, the service Nginx stop. Uh, we could just as easily, you know, add another bit here that sure did a, you know, uh, yum update or you know, get update, get update depending on on your you know your flavor of ice cream there but uh, you know you could run all the commands you needed and, and as todd mentioned if it did uh if one of those commands failed if it was a remediation action where the command failed you could then step out to a notification here where on failure we have additional notifications where you could create a pager do a duty event send a different webhook you know, maybe uh, maybe just send an event notification back to Sensu, as well as if that service continued to stay down too long, I believe you can handle that on the Sensu side as well. And there's a second question now from Josh. He's asking, and this is more of a Sensu question, how does this provide advantages over uh, check hooks, which are a, a thing in Sensu where uh, you can execute a, you can actually within Sensu execute commands Based on you know uh, based on check statuses, and that yes that actually is a, a kind of a simple form of automated remediation, but obviously you can see the power that that Rundeck gives you here, uh, being able to provide multi step jobs versus a simple uh, check hook, which is a single script unless you're you know writing you know very large automated remediations within you know shell scripts or internal programs, Rundeck gives you a, a lot more uh, flexibility in creating your jobs, which can then also be ran manually or on schedule basis versus a check hook, which is just purely reactionary. And going back to the crawl, walk, run uh, discussion that I, I talked about later with the mountain is you can build out these scripts and, and, and share them with people to run manually. If, if we don't, didn't want to automate, you know, just starting that Nginx service, we could notify, you know, the people through Sensu. They could log in to run deck and they may just be a job runner. They don't, you know, they don't have full admin access to this, but they can come in and see, here's the sensu fix button. I'm going to run that against, you know, this particular node, you know, and as an, as a run deck admin, you can be managing what those steps are on the back and that script on the back uh, without having to, uh, as, you know, Todd said, write the script, get it onto, you know, the Sensu server, et cetera. So all of your automation is contained here. In addition with Rendek Enterprise, you can add webhooks that will run multiple jobs based on, on rule sets. So if we use our advanced run job, we can pick this job, the same job to run, but maybe we want to run it in a specific condition where, you know, service, uh, you know, maybe there's a service field in the payload and it equals Nginx. You know, and then we could add a, an additional rule that ran a different job. So you can, you can really consolidate all of your automation into that single call and, and then react to it with and manage it within Rundeck. Tracy, did you have any other questions that have popped up um, either from email or other avenues? Yeah, I do have one for you. How can someone try this in their own environment? So depending on, on which side you came from, I guess the, the probably the easiest way is reach out and um, we can get started with, with, with the trial or get connected on, on that. Um, I know on Sensu's homepage, there's a, a you know sign up for a trial or get a trial license. And then this particular environment, right? If you're just looking specifically, like how do we take a look at some of these examples? Uh, we're working on ways to, on a way to make this um, available publicly. You know, for for the to get in the technical weeds a bit, this is actually a, a very uh, much self-contained Docker environment demonstration. So we're working on make, making that available. If if you have both solutions today and, and are interested in, in taking a look at some of the jobs, um, you can reach out to us, and we'll uh, 
we'll get you the project or, or get you the, the environment. Right. And the one note from the Sensu side is the, the handler that, that Sensu uses for talking to Rundeck is, is actually licensed. So to use it in a Sensu environment, you will need a, a license. If you're an existing customer, you should have one. Uh, if not, you can uh, request a trial license from our website. Great. Todd, I had one other question for you. Oh, man. Uh, this is a burning question from Tracy. <laughs> I have to know, does your frog mascot have a name? Actually, it's a monitoring lizard, and oh. her, name is, her name is Lizzie. Lizzie the monitoring lizard. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Sensu plugin, James, is for Rundeck Enterprise, if, if that's it, if you meant Meteor Enterprise on the Rundeck side. A couple other. Great. Thanks, James. Uh, the how does the open source edition relate to the enterprise product? What are the benefits and does Sensu run in an offline environment? So um, ask, I, I'm guessing that the question of, of open source versus enterprise is on the run deck side. So I'll answer that. There, there's quite a few um, feature differences between open source and uh, the enterprise product. In this, you know, as it relates to this webinar, we have quite a few what we refer to as enterprise plugins uh, that, that streamline configuring uh, systems. There, you know, there's things for Sensu, there's PagerDuty, there's AWS and Azure, et cetera. There's clustering available with the enterprise version. There's enhanced uh, scheduling. I'm just trying to rattle some of these off the, the top of my head uh, on our website. I, I believe they just put out a new comparison with a side-by-side -side feature set. And in terms of run, since you're running in an offline environment, I'm curious if you're asking if this if this is a SaaS product or if it runs in your environment. It runs in your environment. You host it. If if that's not the question you're asking, uh, maybe you can you can follow up. Um, Kevin, uh, is your question for Sensu or is your question for Rundeck? For Rundeck, from a, a status standpoint, you can use the health checks to drive some of that. Um, as far as status goes, you can see the activity tab and you, know, you can see a list of all the activity that happened within that particular project. We do separate things by project um, that you know, that it tends to be an ACL and, and, you know, how people like to, to organize stuff. Todd, I'll let you talk about a single pane of glass. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you just hop over to the Sensu dashboard and click on that uh, federated dashboard there, that's the that's the kind of the entry point uh, dashboard. And if you're actually running multiple Sensu clusters in the back end and running the enterprise product, you can federate and have multiple dashboards roll up into a single dashboard. Arthur, I guess that one um, would apply to both products as well. There, all I can comment on that is, is it has been talked about, about providing some SaaS functionality for Rundeck. And not, it's nothing I'm aware of on the current Sensu plans, but uh, never say never. Uh, Kevin, you're, Kevin, you're, you're welcome. I saw the thanks flash by there. Naga, can we expect Sensu to get integrated with Rundeck in the future to get benefits under one license? Sensu and Rundeck uh, today are, are separate companies, so um, they, it is separate licensing, you know, approaches and, and discussions. Does the Sensu plugin on Rundeck allow you to make any any Sensu API call? So the the list that we have today was was kind of covered by this. Uh, you can in Rundeck make any API call. There's a an HTTP step, so it. If there are actions here, or sorry, if there are actions missing from, from this list that you would be interested in, you know, automating or, or running from Rundeck, I'm curious about it. We'd love to add it to the list. So technically the answer to your question is yes. Uh, it might not, you know, if, if it's not in that list today, it's not going to be one of those branded ones. So if I, you know, if I use the term branded to distinguish them, when we look at editing this job, uh, you can see that the uh, create silence step has, you know, the Sensu logo. And when you go to edit it, you're just providing the check name. Uh, we actually didn't even have to provide the API URL and key because it's part of our project settings. So it'll inherit those. If there was something that you couldn't do through, through one of the existing um, steps, these existing Sensu steps that are here, we could use an HTTP step or a script step.
but yeah, I'm definitely if if there's something you would want to do from here, I, I'd I'd be curious to to know what that is. I think Tracy, does the the email that goes out afterwards include contact information? Yes, it does. Uh, Rundick does not require an agent on the Sensu hosts, and Todd, maybe help me out with this second See, part. Since you proxy host, can we use API calls or other Rundeck integrations as response to? Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that you know we're using the for the for the node discovery. We're using you know we're reaching out to Sensu, but Rundeck obviously offers multiple avenues for getting nodes into and then deduplicates them. So if you have a you have a, a node that's available through multiple contact points. That would also include, you know, for obviously with what's happening on on the back end of, of Rundeck here is it's actually using SSH to get to those to those nodes to run those remediation steps. Uh, there may be other avenues for connecting to, you know, your your proxy entities and, and running any remediation steps or job events. That's uh, that's more of a question for you know how do you how do you actually uh, connect it to Rundeck. You could also use something where you use uh, unscheduled checks, possibly, and use those as a uh, through Rundeck to submit uh, actions onto an entity. Yeah, on, on the Rundeck side, we, we don't use agents. We use um, whatever the standard kind of connection protocol or however you want to connect to that you know device. So these are these all being you know Linux servers. We're we're using SSH. If if it were Windows machines, we've got the PYWinRM. Um, plugins and, and, and other area, other ways of connecting to those. So as as Todd mentioned, there, there's a variety of node sources. So you can pull from your CMDB, you can pull from, you know, you can just create a file if you want to provide that list. In, in our sense, or in this list, we did a Sensu node source. So this is pulling all of those nodes from the entity list in, in Sensu. And then connecting to it with, you know, the host, you know, we've got a host name, you know, listed in here, or sorry, an IP address that it, it pulls in and connects with SSH. Did that cover your, your question? Oh, it went away. Uh, Josh, did that, that cover your question or do you have a, any clarification you wanted to? And obviously email from both sides here will be going out. So if you have questions after the fact, you can follow up. So yeah, you can use Runjack Actions. I mean, it, it really is like kind of the open sandbox. You you can, it's hard to find stuff that, that you can't do. If you can call it with a script, then you can call it with Runjack. If it's based on a Sensu event, I think you would have to still trigger that Sensu, that Sensu event would have to trigger the handler in Sensu to let Runjack know, hey, go, go do this. Is that right, Todd? Yes. If that, yeah, if that's yes. something you can yes, script through run deck, yeah. If you can, if you can script that, Josh, uh, then it can do that. So the the failed, you know, the the failed Sensu check or event, when that you know event when that that triggers in Sensu, Sensu the Sensu handler just has to tell run deck, hey, fire this webhook, uh, and it and it does send it a payload, so you you could you could react to it with that. Yeah, and if you if you uh, can you show real quick the webhook definition yep. for us, because one of the things here, if you scroll to the bottom there, the node filter for this for the job that's being ran is actually being based on data from the Sensu event, because within that you can see the entity metadata name is the node that is generating this event. So you get the full within this event, you get the full Sensu event payload. Which I'm assuming then can then be used within the you know cannot still be used within the job, so the job has access to all that data as it runs. It does quite a few. So when uh, quite a few. So uh, Josh asked, what scripting languages does Runic allow? You know, depending on on the the script plugins, we we've seen people working with with Ruby. Uh, there's Groovy available. You can run Bash scripts. That I think that it covers quite a few of them. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a full list it's, handy. It's essentially anything you you know anything you fork and run from a back from your Rundeck server. Yep. So you might have to have the libraries available on the Rundeck server to, to execute it. But down, or, down here, or, even in advance, you can pick the file extension of, of what it is, or you know a specific invocation string to to run the script. Uh,